Hey guys, I hope you're doing great. Uh, so entrenching is the next uh, module. And basically entrenching is, um, it's, it's a form of clarifying, all right? And it's, it's a cunning way of, basically if you think about a call, it's, it's, you wanna, it's moving down like a left or right direction or up and down direction, whatever your mind, how your mind pictures it. But you're taking a person on a journey Again, the way that entrenching works is imagine um, a drunk guy walking down a, uh, a country road and you know how he's kind of like staggering to the left, he's staggering to the right and then his buddy, his sober buddy is just like, oh, you can see him staggering to the right so he pushes him and he pushes him back into the centre of the road, then he's staggering to the left and then you push him into the right from the left into the centre of the road. So what entrenching does, it doesn't make or break the deal, but what it does is it it don't forget, a person has to subscribe to a certain belief in order for for a deal to close. They have to say, ah, oh, yeah, you know, you guys are the ones that are going to get me this problem solved. All right. And there's, it depends on the, the nuance of, it depends on the individual coming onto the call. And somebody's going to be fairly cynical or unaware. But then there's going to be people who have really, um, got beliefs about the industry, got beliefs about your product, got beliefs about you, or got beliefs about the influencer maybe that um, give you that like that kind of upper hand. And once we identify then when this upper hand is in place, we really want to sort of highlight it and bring it into the fore. And we do that by using probing and clarifying questions. All right. So here's the examples, like prospect. I really like in your video how you said that the lead gen was automated. Ah, okay, so what was it about the automation specifically that excited you the most, though? Or what do you think would be the possible benefits to have an automation uh, within your lead gen process? Yeah, so you can see what I've done there. They've actually, they're beginning to future pace the, pros the proposition of having your offer in place. So what you're doing is then you, you're just taking them to the next level. So they say, oh, yeah, okay. And then you're getting them to explore it in their own mind then, yeah? Okay, in this in the video, it just seems so sincere. Sincere. You hear that a lot on BizOp offers, whereby, you know, somebody who is, you know, they're, they're, they're relatable. Oh, yeah, you know, that is feedback that we do get quite a lot. And instead of you saying, yeah, he's the most relatable person on the planet, man, um, which is just going to sound like salesy cheese. And you would say something, you, you know, it's almost like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, we're not that cool. If you, I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times, yeah? So, yeah, I mean, that's feedback we do generally get a lot. So, yeah, I hear you. So you're just playing it down, but, you've, but you're absorbing it as well and you're letting them know that that is a common thing, yeah? Example sort of three. Yeah, I think just Amazon's the future. That's obviously when you're selling something Amazon-related. Well, that's interesting. Like, what makes you say that? Oh, you know, the wife's getting parcels every second day from Amazon. And you see the vans on the road all the time. And then you say something, yeah, I mean, it, it is an industry that's in ascension. So I, I, it does, there is, I mean, it's kind of like what smart people are doing is getting into the industry right now. So I hear you. Okay, and then example four. Um, I just, you know, I just had able, haven't able to be doing it on my own. So oh, that's not, although it's not like a positive per se towards the industry, what it is is, or the, or the offer per se. But what it is, is it's giving you that upper hand. Okay, so what is it specifically that you struggled with in the most, you struggled with the most? Yeah. And then what they're going to do then is, of course, what you're doing is that you're separating them from their current reality and you're taking them down a path. So you're pushing that drunk from the stumbling to the left of the road to the right of the road just to, to get them to capitulate that little bit further that they can't do it on their own. Okay, so again, the guys, um, you know, I could go on with examples for, for a month on this, and it's an art form as much as anything else. So I think what I really wanted to do is raise your awareness of where it comes out, and then um, uh, throughout your process, then you, you're listening out for this sort of thing. And then, like, like if you think about the stem and leaf method, this is an impromptu thing where you hear something and it's a quick... Yeah, a lot of people say that. You know, it's a good comment. That's a fair comment. Or, like, what did you mean by that specifically, though? Yeah, so to taking them further down that path. Not too much to go over in this chapter, guys. Um, it's fairly explanatory. Like I said, it's 
I ha- if I, I could give you like a, you know, I could sit down for a day and give you a hundred examples, but I don't think it's really going to benefit us at this stage.